Hello, 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 and thank you so much for joining another episode of Price on Purpose. Once again, I am your host, Stacey Price. Oh, snap, crackle, pop, guys. Today is Thursday. I didn't even realize it was Thursday. All right, the dog's barking again. Hey there, buddy. Come come over here. I'm doing a podcast. No more barking. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. See? Can't, you can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. See, I'm talking about ownership. You're not owning that it's you that has the reaction. It's not them. It's not them. <laughs> Guys, uh, you can always follow me at Price on Purpose online and you can always email price on purpose at gmail.com that's price with a y one word p-r-y-c-e is the surname <clears throat> so what's up y'all hope your week is going well and if it's not i hope you find a way to make it better for yourself you have more in control than you believe so you just got to sit and just Check in, check into what you can control and stay right there. Don't move a muscle because the thing is, we awesome people like to take on things that are not our responsibility. And then what ends up happening is we start thinking a certain way like, yo, every time I do this, this person does that. Why is that? This person does this to me. And this and this always happens to me. Why does this always I can't stop it. Knock it off. Here's the thing. We all have things that we are responsible for. Not all of us recognize that we're responsible for it. In a couple episodes ago, I believe we discussed how important making choices are. And if we didn't, let's tap into that a little bit. So this month, as I mentioned Uh, I am focused 100% on mental health awareness, and I'm sharing with you tips and ways of thinking to help you get to your next level. Everybody's level is different, but there are certain criteria or certain steps that you must take in order to get to that next step. We all know what we want. We all know what we desire. We all know what we are called to do. However, not a lot of us have the guts to actually do it. Because what happens is to actually do it is going to require sacrifices. And sometimes we are not willing to give them up because they are attached to who we are presently. And then what ends up happening is we're like, I can't, I can't do both. I can't, of course you can't. Of course you can't do both because one is 100% connected to the other and one is 100% not connected to the other. So something's gotta go. You can't put something in a place where something already exists. It doesn't work that way. You can't take up the space with two different forms or two different objects. Like if I put my shoe on the floor, another shoe cannot exist in the same spot unless I move the shoe that's underneath it. I gotta put a shoe on top of a shoe, but that shoe is not activated. It's not, it's not, It's not in the same space, okay? So here's the thing, 100%. There's a great book on ownership by a US Navy SEAL that I read some time ago. You guys should check it out. It's not hard to find. It'll literally say extreme ownership. And I forget the name of the author, but something I believe you should read because what I've even seen for myself and others is that We pick and choose the areas of our lives where we want to progress because it is easy. It is easy to stay in our comfort zone. It's easy to put ourselves in a state where we think we're outside of our comfort zone, but nope, we just built another room in the house of comfort. And what ends up happening is we don't actually grow. We go around the growth because the thing is with growing, it takes sacrifice. And I think sometimes we look at sacrifice as something that is not good. Like we have to give up something that we needed. We didn't need it. Because if if we weren't trying to go to that next step, like that thing that we're sacrificing, if it wasn't a problem, we could bring it with us. But we can't. For example, 
if you want to see if you have an issue with ownership, listen to your response when someone says you did something. I mean, specifically, I'm not talking about complaining. Complaining, I, I don't, I, my brain doesn't register that. I don't understand. Come with a solution. Come with something to, to better the situation if you have an idea to present. Don't just sit there and just blab and blab and blab because the, the, nothing happens. Nothing happens. It's like, okay, good to know. <laughs> good to know. What do you want me to do about it? You know what I mean? So the thing is, if somebody says to you, you always leave the light on, you never turn it off. I'm just making something up, obviously. You always leave the light on. It's like you don't give a shit. It's like you don't care. You always leave the light on. And then you go, well, you always leave the light on on Tuesdays. Chances are, you may, you may have some pro- trouble with ownership. <laughs> Listen to how you respond. Listen to how you respond because here's the thing. We don't realize we're playing a game of tennis sometimes when we're in a disagreement. Disagreements happen. It's natural. Not everybody's going to feel the way you do. So some people are going to disagree. The thing is, what we end up doing is we play the game of tennis when we argue or have a disagreement. Because what ends up happening is we keep serving shit until one person taps out. Most people, when they play tennis, right, in this argument situation, you always leave the light on. Boom, hit the ball. The other person says, well, no, you always leave the light on. Boom, hit the ball. Versus, versus, somebody serves it to you. You always leave the light on in the living room. It's like you don't care. You know what? I did leave the light on. I apologize. I'm going to try and figure this out because clearly I'm, I, I didn't recognize it. But I guess I left the light on. I didn't, I didn't remember. I really didn't. Oh, because I don't, I don't remember. I apologize. I'll turn it off next time. See, the difference with two, these two responses is that one, you're deflecting. You're like, I don't, you always leave the light on. Nope, but you always do this. It's like you're trying to one-up the other person. Where does that go? Think about it. Where does it go? What happens? Like, what pro- like progress are we thinking about here? This is what I look at. I look at point A and point B and draw a line. Right? Draw a line. If you have a piece of paper, do it. Put a little dot here at one end of the line and a little dot here on the end of, on the, on the, end of the other line. Or the end of... You know what I'm trying to say, okay? So let's say you draw a line on a piece of paper. You got point A, you got point B at the end. When you have a conversation, your goal is to get from one point to the other. Sometimes you have to meet in the middle. Most times you have to meet in the middle. And and you kind of have to see where, what's the point of the conversation. You want to make sure you're absorbing everything. So sometimes point A can last a little bit longer than we would hope. But sometimes there's some like shit to sort out. Like sometimes you have some stuff to sort out. Be like, okay, I didn't know I left the light on. I didn't think it was me. Did you leave it? Oh, don't worry about it. I'll turn it off. Give it up. Give up the pride. Because pride is the one that's like, but you always leave the light on. You don't say anything. You don't hear me complaining. For what? For what? Like, think about it. For what is that? What is the purpose of that time frame? Ask yourself. Only you can answer that. I can tell you what a lot of people want. They want to level up, like just by default. It's like, but you do it too. It's like, let me share with you how much you're a hypocrite. <laughs> I, am, I am recognizing your behavior. And this is what I think it means. <laughs> it's like, let's, let's, let's move it along, okay? And get to what we really want. What we really want in this conversation, this example, is I would like a change in your behavior. I don't feel that you want a change in your behavior because I'm seeing the same thing happen over and over again. And I don't know why. Can you tell me why? 
That's the real question. I like the light off. You leave it on. I told you I want it off. You're still leaving it on. What do we need to do to fix this? That's really what the conversation is. Think about how long that conversation is versus uh, you're leaving the light on. But so do you. But what are we doing with the time, guys? What are we doing with the time? What are we doing with the time? Ownership. Taking ownership saves time. Taking ownership creates a sense of clarity. It's just better that way. <laughs> so y'all be like, nah, but he did it, but she did. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. It doesn't help the situation. Taking ownership can take a load off of your shoulder. Taking ownership is not always easy because you know what taking ownership means? That means recognizing that there's something that you may or may not be aware of that is happening. And someone else is looking at it and trying to understand why it is happening. So that moment can be very uncomfortable because it's like, well, did I do something wrong? Now I'm a bad person. (laughs) You know what I mean? Sometimes we just like escalate. I suck now, (laughs) you know, but it doesn't have to go there. It doesn't really have to go there. What we can do is work on recognizing what it feels like to take ownership. I am telling you right now, it doesn't feel good all the time. It doesn't feel good. However, long-term, long-term taking ownership, not only can take burdens off of your shoulders because you're not taking responsibility for shit that you had nothing to do with. Two, taking ownership, you now see where another person, where, where you begin and where you end. Let me explain that one a little bit. When we don't take ownership, sometimes what happens is when we communicate with people, we're just going tit for tat. Like there's nothing really, like we're just expressing ourselves. I'm angry. Oh, well, I'm angry because you're angry at me not being angry. (laughs) Now we're like, who feels what? We don't know. Because we're just like taking on ownership for things that has nothing to do with us. That's what happens when you're doing that. But she did it. But he, but you're looking at the wrong thing. You should be looking at yourself and everything. Is this the right place for me? well, they always do this and this and this. But that doesn't fit my values, but I know there's an opportunity here. Okay, so now you're negotiating with yourself whether you should go against your principles or not, right? Just just admit it, just admit it. Be like, oh, well, these people don't fit my values, but I need a paycheck. Or these people don't fit my values, but I have fun. Is it worth it to you? If it is, then it is. If it's not, then it's not. But it's something you have to look at. Take a look at it. And the thing is, this is not something where it's like, oh, I took ownership today and I couldn't believe it. I took ownership. And then that's it. This is something that has to be done over and over again. Over and over again. So if somebody says to you, like, yo, you're always playing the victim. What they're saying is, I don't see you putting you in this situation. You're seeing it one way, which is everything I did or did not do. You're not looking at it what you could have done because anything where there's like multiple people involved, everybody, everybody's involved. Send the email or not, whether you said something or not. That's why like sometimes when there's disagreements, they're like, yo, silence. You made a choice. You made a choice to choose silence. The thing is sometimes choosing silence may not be what society wants. And that's okay. That's the thing. We we hold ourselves to a certain moral code sometimes. Like we hold it sometimes, but then sometimes we let it go. And then when we let it go, <clears throat> somebody was like, what the hell? Why did you why did you not say anything here? Huh? You say everything's everywhere else. It there wasn't space, there wasn't a moment. I didn't need to say anything. I don't think anything needed to be said. Well, that doesn't make any sense. That's fine. 
<laughs> let it go. Let it go. Be okay with the decisions you make. Be okay with it. If someone's blaming you for something and you're like, I don't feel at fault, don't be like, well, you know what? I just want to debt it. Let me just apologize. Whoa, hey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't do something just to end the conversation like that, like that. Emphasis on like that, because there's different things to do or to say to end a conversation in a sense where, or an argument, I should say, where uh, it's fine to admit certain things if they are true, if they're true. If it's worthy of your apology, then go ahead. But it has to align with you. It, it's not for the other person. Like, you got to do for you. You know what I mean? And, and what's within your integrity and what's within your feelings. Because what ends up happening is if you're doing it for someone else. Let me just apologize so Joanne could be quiet. Let me apologize so let me just dead it. Because you, you're, you're complaining to you. You just gave your power. You just gave your power. It's different if you say, I see what you're saying, I get it, blah, blah, blah. Do things that you mean to do. Like do, don't just do it to do it. That, you're wasting your time. What is it for? Ask yourself, like really, what is it for? And, and line up with that, line up. Because the thing is, when you line up for what other people want, like we spoke about the other day, like, my family wants me to, or my family always, the people I'm around always, you start giving your power away. Taking ownership, you take your power back and you know what your power is. So the number one way to find out if you need to work on ownership, most of us do, most, not all, most, the, the number one way is to find out how you behave in moments where you know you were at fault. Like for you, not somebody else saying it to you, like you in your heart and soul. You're like, you know what? I should have turned the light off and I forgot. Just admit it. You know what? I, I get that you're upset and I, I understand this is upsetting. I, I left the light on. I didn't remember it at first, but. I left it on. I'm, I'm going to try and work on this. If you can, do me a favor. Like, remind me if I ever leave it off. Because I know that this is annoying. I know we're trying to save on power. I, I, I get it. I understand how you feel. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what most of us want. We want to be understood. That's it. But somebody can't understand you if you don't say what you feel. People cannot assume what you feel, although they do. Straight up, they will make assumptions all day long. It's up to you to share your feelings. And if you don't share your feelings, then you don't share it. But don't complain later, be like, well, Joanne keeps doing this. Did you tell her it was bothering you? Did you tell her to stop? Did you tell her how you felt? Because I think most of us are like, well, I don't know if they give a shit. I don't know if they care about it the way I do. I'm going to tell you right now, it is not possible to get someone to feel the way you do if they don't fucking feel that way. Straight up. If you don't feel that way, look, or they don't feel that way, that's it. That's, it's totally fine to not feel the same way. When you're in a relationship or any type of relationship or you have a friend or whatever the case is, it's okay to feel differently about something. But don't shit on somebody's way of feeling about it. Just be like, yo, I don't feel that way. It is what it is. It's not, I'm right, you're wrong. Stop looking for that. What the fuck are you looking for that for? Like, seriously, what are you looking for that for? Well, that's not how we do things here. <laughs> stop it I, mean, if I was her I wouldn't have listen listen to this I wouldn't have done that are you kidding me are you kidding me you know how we get <laughs> did you see what she did like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's, 
it's really nonsense when you think about it. Like, think about the last argument you had. Like, did it make sense? Like, look at it. Well, she shouldn't have spoke to me like that. Okay. Did you tell her? No. But you told you told her friend though. Because deep down you really wanted her friend to do the work for you. What the fuck for? Like seriously, what the fuck for? Why don't you say it? Like, look, and I need to pull you aside. The way you spoke to me, I don't I don't flow that way. I know you're trying to make a point, but I'm gonna tell you right now, when someone run up on me like that and complain, it, I just think it's BS. I think it's BS. And and I know that that may not be your intent. You're trying to tell me something, but I can't, like, I don't, I don't do that. That's not how I communicate. If I mean, we can meet in the middle, but I'm just saying, like, when you do, when you do that, like, it makes me want to run or it makes me want to this. And then they have the ability to be like, look, you were this or you were that. And I don't give a damn how you communicate. All right, cool. That's, that's fine. Walk away. Walk away. That's the thing. We don't, we don't know when to walk away. We'd be like, oh, let me try and force it down your throat. What I'm trying to say is stop it. <laughs> if the person says they don't give a damn, they mean it. And they don't have to give a damn. So many of us want somebody to give a damn when they don't have to give a damn. What the hell do they need to give a damn for? I talk about this with like, think about it. I want my family support in my business. My family doesn't support my business or my friends don't share my, my work, the, the work I do online. They don't share it. They don't share it. What they do is they like on Jay-Z stuff. They like Beyonce and I see they're online, but I just dropped a new song and they ain't say shit about it. Okay. So? So what? Your, your dream or your drive or the things that you desire are worth so much more than what your friend thinks about it. Because it happens the same way. You know this. You know this. You could be like, yo, guess what I just did? I just did this and it was amazing. Oh my God, did you see it? Your friend's like, nah, I didn't. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know, you're mad offended because you're just like, yo, what the hell? Like, I was just busting my tail and all I wanted some support. Guess what? Your friend is not going to feel the way that you do about your creativity. Your creativity was given to you. You love it. And look, it's okay. Let me tell you, when you take ownership for how you feel, and you realize how much of it you have control over and how much sometimes you may give it to other people willingly, willingly, you're going to start to shed off some stuff. You're going to shed off the weight because it's like, oh, wait, why am I even, this is the thing, your brain, your mind, this is what I've been thinking about recently. Let me share this with you. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard about like the third eye, right? like between your two eyebrows like that, or, you know, that part of your forehead, dead center, right? That is one of the chakras, okay? That's something you gotta look up like on your own because I'm not gonna explain it right. So if you wanna find out about the chakras, go and Google that. But here's what you gotta realize, because I know I've done, I've done this experiment for myself. Let me know if it works for you, but the way I know if I'm taking ownership or not, or the way I know if like I'm progressing in a certain space, I know that when I'm thinking or when I'm in my head, right? When I'm not present, when I'm thinking about something somebody said to me or something somebody did or something like that, I realize that like physically I'm thinking with the back of my mind. Like, that's what it feels like to me. Like, physically, I could feel like the back of my head or like the sides of my head are over, like, or did, like the wheels are just turning. Like, I'm really thinking about this, right? When I start to bring my attention to the 
front of my forehead, like dead center where that, that, that chakra is right there. Let me tell you what happened. That's when I'm laser focused. Like when I bring my awareness to the front of my head, there are no thoughts there. It's do, 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 keep doing. Next step, what does it look like? Where are we going? Why is it happening? What do we need to do? Do we need to change? What are we fixing? What are we developing? What's next? That's, that's what happens. But when I'm in the back, when I feel like the back of my head is hurting, you know how some, some of us get those migraines and stuff like that? What the hell are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? You're thinking about something that happened yesterday, six months ago, six weeks? You know what I mean? You didn't take ownership. You made a decision. You ain't own it yet. That's why you're still cycling through it. We've all done it, right? We've all done it. Like we're overthinking. We're over processing. Oh, everything sucks. I can't do this. You know, if I just had this one more thing, oh, all I need is you're wasting time and you're not taking ownership. You, you know, I was going to draw last night, but the way the lighting, stop it. <laughs> like, stop. You're over here making excuses. You're not taking ownership. Just be like, look, I want to do it, but I'm scared. I want to do it, but I've never done it before. So I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Like really get down, like get down to the nitty gritty, like really ask yourself. Because the thing is, what we sometimes do is we go and ask for advice from other people and then Next thing you know, we're doing 50 things because we spoke to 50 people. And then we're like, oh, shit, it won't work. It won't work. Well, it's not working because you're doing 50 different things. All of these options could possibly work. You spoke to 50 people. They could possibly work. But what's going to work for you? What, like, like, seriously, ask yourself, what is going to work for me? What do I have control over? Realist, like realistically, oh, my kid won't use the potty. Like my kid's just like freaking doing this all the time. Okay, what can you do about it? Well, he needs to use the potty. Oh, word. <laughs> like, what do you need to do to create behavior change? Or what signs are you seeing to encourage the behavior with your child? You see, the, the questions are gonna differ. When you think with that laser, like when you focus your thoughts on the front of your, your, your head, when you think out of that area, you start looking for opportunities versus defeat. Straight up. Think about it. This is the question we got to ask ourselves. Like when you are paranoid, when you are anxious, what part of your brain are you in? What does it feel like for you? Is it in your body or are you just like, don't move? What does it look like? And then this is what you got to do. You got to change where you're thinking out of. Because I know for me, it's the size of my head. I don't move and I'm just in my head. But then all of a sudden, I start feeling laser focused because I'm changing the attention. I'm, I'm feeling that part of my, my mind kind of like tickle a little bit. And I'm like, oh, here's what we need to do. Next step, next step. Let's go. Stop thinking about it so much. And that's what it is. That's what, that's what the ownership is. You have to realign with what you got to do and where you're going. What's the point? Everything in life works the same way. I don't care if you're trying to meet somebody to date. I don't care if you're trying to start a business. I don't care if it's like, yo, I just want to like run more, lose weight. Or, hey, I want my husband or my wife to respect me. Whatever it is. You have a point A and you have a point B. Something I, I still kind of use today and I kind of like write it down is, I don't know if you guys remember this in school where you had the compare and contrast. You remember drawing them circles? <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember those circles. You draw one circle and then the other circle kind of goes through it. So you have compare on the left. You have both in the middle, which is where the circles overlap. And you have contrast on the right. So I do it sometimes a little, like this is what I do when I have a tough problem, right? Sometimes I tell the person, look, I can't interact right now. This is too much. Let me think about it and I'll get back to you. There's nothing wrong with that. Let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Like 
Think about what you need in the situation. Boom, next step. Get a piece of paper. You could write down compare, contrast, both, or you could put down pros, both, and cons on the right. And make a decision that way. Like, get it out of your head. Because here's the thing. When you're in your head, you can't see clearly. Think about it. You're driving forward, all right? Think about if you're driving a car and you're in your head. Like, you, you could cause an accident. You could really get yourself into danger. So you have, to, you have to be present in the moment so you can react right. You know what I mean? So sometimes if you need to make a decision, you write these things down and you go, all right, so what, what's going on here? Like, what, what is, like, what are we trying to do? So in the example before, your partner's not turning the lights off or whatever. What are the pros? The pros are, or what the problem is, is that he ain't turning the lights off or she ain't turning the lights off. What do we want them to do? We want them to turn the lights off. But they keep doing the same thing. Here's the thing. What is the next step in the behavior change? The result is we want them to turn the lights off. Does that, does that mean I have to pick up some slack? Because you know it's going to happen again. But the, the difference, the thing is, you are getting upset about it, not the other person. I see this happen in couples all the time. You keep doing and you won't change, and you can't, and you won't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we're looking for something that's, like, it's been 31 years. <laughs> it's been six, six years. Have they done it before? Chances are, that's not going to change. Think about it right now. And then you're like, oh, oh he's not going to change? She's not going to change. Are you kidding me? I got to get out of this. No, that's not what that means. What it means is you may have to do something to make yourself feel better. And I'm talking about light work. I'm not talking about like major stuff like cheating and stuff. That's like different. You got a different situation. I can't give you advice on that. <laughs> but what I can say is chances are if somebody is not aligned with the values that you have, chances are you're you're going to have an increase in disagreements. So your your decision is not the other person, it's what do you want and is this going to it can it, like remember I said a couple days ago and if you didn't hear it, check back at the previous episodes. Remember when I said that one thing cannot exist in the same space as another thing? Like if a shoe was already there, you can't put another shoe there because a shoe only one shoe can occupy that space. So if you're looking for somebody that's going to change a value for you, mind you, your value is a certain sense of stability. This person does not believe in monogamy or, or that type of stability. You have to ask yourself, are you willing to let go of that priority or that value for this person to constantly go through their behavior? If the answer is no, it's like a flow chart that therefore, then you make your decision. <laughs> but that's the thing. Get it out of your head. Make a graph. Do something like that. And it will help you determine how to get to that next step and what ownership means for you. I'm telling you, once you start to look at ownership, it will free you. It will free you. You're not responsible for other people. I mean, unless you're a child, you, you have kids, then that's a little different. But when somebody reacts a certain way, that's on them. You know, you could be supportive, you could be there for them, but it's not your fault. You know what I mean? Kids are a different story. At the end of the day, they're their own people too. But your, your job as a parent or caregiver is to give them the information they need to succeed and they have the ability to take it or not. I think that's something that, you know, even when we, when I did the podcast about like family values, you can listen back to that if you'd like. I think it was uh, two days ago or so, but um, you do have a right as a child to take the advice or not. And I think that's where some parents and kids get into disagreements because as a parent, we feel we knew, we know best for our children or we know best for our kids or, or whoever it is. But at the end of the day, they have the right to take the advice or not. And I think also that's why sometimes when we get older, like even for me, like my parents have told me things many times ago and I'm like, what the hell does that mean? 
And then I grow up and I'm like, oh, I get it. Like it only took me like 37 years to get it, but I get it now. <laughs> right? So guys, here's what we went through today. Ownership. Ownership is something that does not always feel good in the beginning. Okay. But it can feel good later on in life as you constantly learn how to make decisions and be confident in your choices. And the more you own from your behavior and the more you look at yourself, you can see the best way to show up for you or even for other people. But it does start with ownership. Two, uh, you can't control other people. You can always provide your assistance, your guidance, but your goal is to control you. You are the driver of your Maserati. So pick whatever your favorite car brand is and you become that, right? Like if you are someone that loves cars, chances are you get that bitch washed like every day. Like you like, you ain't gonna see me on some dirty wheels, okay? You know, like I tell people like I have a car, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, car washes have subscriptions. and. I'm like, it makes sense for me to get the subscription because I have a black car and with the pollen coming down, it just looks ridiculous. And then I get in the car and I'm just like, I feel like it's in my nose. I'm just like, ah, you know what I mean? So I have a car wash subscription that I pay for monthly, which I should change to like the six month one, but whatever. That's not the whole point of the conversation. It's something that's important to me. You know what I mean? But somebody else is not going to feel that way. Somebody else is going to be like, really? I just wash it like once a year. Totally fine. Me? I'm like, that's gross. <laughs> you know, your car sometimes, depending on how often you use it, is like a second home. Clean that shit. <laughs> you know, but taking ownership means that not everybody is going to feel the way you do. And it's okay. That's fine for them not to feel the way you do. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Be okay with people not agreeing with you and don't call them out their name because they don't agree. They're like, Oh, you're an idiot. You think that this person, this you're an, you're an idiot. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> it's nonsense. It really is nonsense. You know, taking ownership can, as I mentioned, free you, but it's going to help you really figure out and learn who you are. And I think, that is one of the greatest things on earth is to know who you are, find out why you are and find out even if who you want to become. You know, I think sometimes we don't take ownership. We fantasize about lifestyles. We fantasize about being like someone else, but we don't really check in to find out what we want and desire. And we don't really check into what we can do about it to change it. That's the thing. You could change it about the choices you make. Guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Price on Purpose. My goal is always to share with you things that I've learned along the way in my mental health journey, but also providing you with the things that I'm learning now. Uh, I read, right now I'm reading two, two to three books. Right now I read multiple books simultaneously and I take those inf take that information pretty much I share it on this podcast and I share it with other people because knowledge is meant to be shared. Also, deep down, I feel like, I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, The Book of Eli, but a lot of these movies freak me out when I see that they're like, oh, they stole all the books. I'm trying to meet, read as many as possible so that not only for me that I have the information on behavior and how people are but also for me to be a better person and individual for myself and others. I 100% believe in being the change that you want to see. And I think sometimes we get into the habit of pointing the finger and then we forget that we actually have the ability to create change in a space, but we don't count ourselves in. We count ourselves out by pointing the finger. I think all of us can do a better job at standing up for what we believe in in a respectable way where people can learn from it and grow from it. Once again, you could always follow me on social media. That's at Price on Purpose. You could also 
email price on purpose at gmail.com. If you have questions, you want to write into the show, whatever, uh, you could email me there. Um, I believe you could also send like a voice note or so through email. So even if you want to do that and ask a question, maybe I'll figure out how to play it on the show. You know, let me know if that's something you're interested in. And as always on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Maria Daniels and myself go live on a show that we do called Spontaneity, uh, focus on mind, body, and spirit, but also focusing on planning and being more spontaneous in your life, which I also think is great because that's something that I am learning to do, uh, which is challenging, but not impossible. But once you're focused on a definite purpose, you'll see it, you'll see it through. So once again, thank you so much again for listening to this episode. I 100% encourage if you liked this episode to share it with a friend or to share it on your social media. And I just really appreciate you guys. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. I'm, I'm seeing the hearts in the chat. So thank you for that. And, you know, feel free to subscribe and join me again here tomorrow for another episode of Price on Purpose. I believe your, your name is pronounced Heichel. And if it isn't, let me know. But thank you for staying until the end. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And guys, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. All right, I said it right. Cool. Uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Remember, be the change that you want to see. You know, get to that uh, next step. Uh, the email is price on purpose. So the same name as the podcast at gmail.com. So price on purpose, one word at gmail.com. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.